uh, simple uh, cylinder here and I'm just going to push it down. Here. So that's going through the object. If I render this portion. Now you see that the cylinder is uh, intercepting the object but it doesn't render if it's behind it. And that will be a great idea for you if you let's say for example if you want to put a shovel here or whatever item behind the object and you still can't composite so all you have to do is just build a dummy object right in front of it and that object will have the MIP mat on it and then this way you can start compositing it. The downfall for this now is that this, the, the elements is composited right on the background image and if I go to the alpha there is no alpha for it so if I want to take this by itself along with the shadow this is not going to be the optimum solution for you. For this I'm just going to open a new scene or actually go to the uh, original state of that scene so I reopened the scene and pre-rendered the image and you can see here there is no alpha. So I'm going to keep this image for future comparison. And now let's adjust our shading network so we can capture that alpha. So we have the MIP mat shadow and the background is connected to the camera map. And that will add the image which is the background in it. Go back to my hyper shade. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to break the connection. If you notice here there's taken out value A and out value. If I do right click and say break connection you'll still have one which is the A connected. So make sure that you break that as well from here. And the only thing I'm going to do different now is I'm going to connect a new environment to the background which is the MIP ray switch. So for this new environment node I'll be using the same MIP camera map as my environment. So I'm just going to make this one in here. And for the background, I need to pass the alpha. So I'm going to use a node that is under the data conversion, which is called the MIB color alpha. And I'm going to put it in the background. However, this node by default has the factor of 1 because it usually have an input of, like, for example, a texture file that you want to extract alpha to it. So we wanted to say, oh no, I don't want you to, I actually I want you to ignore that input in here, so therefore I'm going to put a value of 0. So this way it's not going to be looking at the input. So let's have a quick look at what we've done so far. We have the ray switch connected to the MIB color alpha as the environment. And we have a couple of parameters here. So the map obviously is connected to the uh, texture file. The multiplier is if you want to increase the intensity of that map, you can multiply it by this value. We, of course, this is 1, so therefore it's going to be 1 to 1. The D gamma, since we already have a, uh, a lens shader, the Mea Simple Exposure shader, and we put the gamma over there 2.2, so we need to match it. Therefore, we're going to place 2.2 in here. Per pixel match, that means we stretch the image that we have for the in the background to fill the screen size, which is the render size. If it doesn't, it should have a warning in at the bottom saying it doesn't match. Uh, however, if you say per pixel match, that means the image will be aligned bottom left to the screen size bottom left. And if it doesn't match, obviously it will have uh, a cut or uh, an, a black area because it didn't f uh, fit in the screen. So let's render this and see what we've done so far. All right, so we see now, obviously, the shader doesn't look at the background color anymore. However, if you look at the alpha, you see the alpha is being captured in here. And this is get us closer to what we want. Uh, I'm going to keep this image here because I want to show the po next point, which is transparent alpha. And actually, this is, will make more sense when I render. So if I enable this and render, you will see here the alpha now is capturing the actual geometries plus the, uh, the shadow. So that sometimes can, if you want it to be in that uh, particular situation for the composite, we can have the color still capture the background, but when we enable the transparent alpha, it will give us an alpha of the, sh of the geometry along with the shadows. So I'm just going to disable that for now because I don't need it. And after that is off screen as environment, and by default is on, that means it's capturing the uh, image that we are using as the environment to uh, eliminate the scene. To return the rays back in here. If not, if this is disabled, it will return whatever color value that you're going to place in here since we want our background, so we're just going to leave that as it is. So if we look at the color now here, the only thing we need to fix obviously is the camera. So we fix the shader on the plane. We need now the camera to ignore that image. So we're just going to go back to my camera. 
and you see the environment shader is still the MIP ray switch. So I'm just, so just going to modify it in here a little bit. I'm just going to go my hyper shade. And I wanted to ignore the background, so I'm just going to break this connection. But I wanted to also to pass the alpha. So if I go to my utility, I'm going to use the same MIB color alpha node. So let's render one more time. Okay, so the render is fine. Everything behind it now is extracted to black. And if we look at the alpha, it's captured the geometry plus the shadow. So this is what we were looking for. And if we compare the two results from previous and after, the illumination values still the same. It didn't change at all. Now you can use this image to comp it in post or whatever application that you wish to choose. So we looked at two ways. We can render it as such in one shot or we can render it in passes and this way you have more control over it in your compositing package. Well I hope you guys enjoyed this session and I'm looking forward to talk to you more.